All right, guys. Hopefully you can hear me well. We did a little bit of a sound check before. Um, I'm Shane with the CrossFit Wheelhouse and Louis Beach Championship. This is Andrew. I think he's on screen. Yes. We got Brian Scott in the background. A um, couple things, kind of like housekeeping, logistics, off the bat. Parking, Dewey Beach is, has street parking all over the place. It's a couple bucks an hour. That's going to be the way to go. The Rusty Rudder will have virtually no parking available because we're going to have the rig. We're going to have a 40-foot working lane for the athletes to competition floor. That's all going to be fenced or barricaded around. There's going to be vendor village. Um, there's going to be a DJ booth and a registration tent and a judge's tent. And then there's going to be athlete village where there's going to be dozens of tents. So don't plan on parking at the rudder. It won't happen. Park wherever you're staying and walk or park on any of the side streets. There's plenty of parking. It's a very walkable town. If you've never been, it's a whole lot of fun. After this, all this work is done, you'll enjoy yourselves. Um, for athlete registration, 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. Between 7.30 and 8, it's going to be a lot of like running around, national anthem, maybe a presentation of, of flags. Um, we'll see. Uh, that's what happened. That's what we had last year from the U.S. National Guard um, from Dover. We're going to go over the workouts and the heat schedule. So you're going to notice if you open the Google Drive, you're going to see the four heat sheets or the four uh, score sheets. They're going to have places on there for judges to make marks. At the end of each, at the end of each movement, you're going to see. At the, at the beginning of each movement, you're going to see the reps to be completed in that round. Where am I at? At the beginning, there we go. So six rope climbs, 20 squat cleans. The tie break time is after those tw first 20 squat cleans. And then we have four, 16, and then two and 12. But this is the total rep. So if you don't, if you get time capped here, the judge will have an idea of, you know, you were through, you were through 48 reps after the, tw the two rope climbs and then however many squat cleans you got. So there's going to be a, an option for your time if you beat the time cap or your reps if you do not beat, beat the time cap. All the small print is the stuff that we are can answer here, but I think for the most part, a lot of the questions are answered. Workout one is an eight minute time cap. We'll go over this. We're going to kind of walk down the floor with this. Um, heats, this heat sheet, which is 32 pages, all right? The key things to keep, to keep in mind and to take away from the heat sheet are, one, we're starting at 8 a.m., heat or workout one, basically, the 10 heats for workout one will be from 8 a.m. to 9.40, basically, 9.38. Then there's going to be a little bit of a break until workout two. Workout two is going to go from 9.50 to almost noon. While those things are going on, basically from 8 a.m. to noon, you have to get the floater workout done. We will describe the floater in a second. When you go to athlete registration, there's going to be a sign-up sheet for the floater workout. The floater workout is a sprint. It's 10 sandbag cleans and a kayak sprint down to the end of the rusty rudder dock and back. That is going to be done on your own time. You're going to sign up sheet like you're playing beer pong in college. You'll know when you're going to go. You'll know based on the heats, uh, the first two workouts, heats, and time time here, when you're going to have time for that. So the morning of, you should have no issue finding time for that. There's going to be three kayaks running all day. So till noon, there's going to be three kayaks running simultaneously from eight until noon. You have to have that kayak chaos floater workout done by noon. Workout four, we'll go over this, why it's called workout four. Um, it's really the third workout, but it's the fourth score, sort of. Um, that's going to be done from like 12.15 on. We should wrap the competition around 2.30, and that's going to serve as the final showdown. If you really got into the, the micro view of the heats, you saw that in workout four, there are no lane assignments. That's because the first two, two workouts will serve as scoring. There's going to be a score from workout one two scores from workout two, three, and then your floater workout score. So you'll have four scores in, and then we are gonna shuffle the lanes and the heats. So
so that the top ranked teams finish and they, they compete in the last heat of each division. It's also going to be swim lane pattern. So teams one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten will go from the middle to the end as far as lanes go. So it will be very regionals, semis, sectionals, whatever. That feel, you'll have an idea of who you're running against and you can pace off them. You see them in your peripheral, they'll be good to uh, compete. That being said, the teams that are not in the top 10 at that point will be in the, the heat before that. So that's how we're running that. Um, it'll be exciting as a final showdown. We're gonna go over workout one. Logistically, we're here across the wheelhouse. We don't have a freestanding rig with rope climbs in the back and all that stuff. But the way that the rig that we have through the Green Beret project works is there's a nine foot upright at the front. That's where you're gonna do your pull-ups, toes to bar, bar muscle ups, all that stuff. It's a 15 foot upright in the back. That's where the ropes are gonna hang from. Um, there's also gonna be wall ball targets, nine and 10 foot wall ball targets on the front, on the nine foot front. So the way the rig will work is the rope climb will be in the back and that's against highway one. The front side will be closer to the rusty rudder and the lanes will be a 40 foot working lane with a rubber mat rollout where you'll work down to a finish line closest to the rusty rudder. That's how we're gonna, so try to work your mind around that. We don't have that here, but that's how it's gonna work. The rig is gonna be 10 lanes. We're building it the night before. Um, it's gonna be awesome. Green Beret Project is an awesome cause, a very worthy cause of, of all of this. We do we put a lot of work into this and we're really excited to see where the fundraising ends up to. Maybe beating last year, hopefully, I think we're almost there already. So keep fundraising. If you don't have a gift butter sign set up, go do it right after this at 8 p.m. Um, workout one, I just showed you, but basically, if you have the score sheets pulled up, you should be able to see the, the different divisions at the top. There's RX, the Masters, and Scale um, with the different weights for the barbell, how they how you add plates. So if you see here, weight added at the bottom of the division, um, you're going to see basically what you add as you work down the floor. So the set weight will be the first weight. And then to get from, say, 115 to 185, guys are going to add 35 pounds on each side then for the second add to get from 185 to 235 will be a 25 pound bumper on each side there will be no subtraction subtracting of weight there will be all adds we're going to show you how that's going to work because we do have working lanes we have these five foot short bars to work with but there's still not a lot of room to give between so we need to make sure that we don't work in other people's lanes we're not in each other's way Way to work out one is going to work. Three, two, one, go. Six rope climbs. RX is going to 15 feet. Scale and Masters are going to 12 foot. The 15 foot mark is going to be the cross member across the back of the rig. You're going to touch the actual steel. The 12 footer will have a tape mark. Okay, you touch that. Um, then you're going to tag your partner. We're tagging between movements, not reps. What I mean by that is you're not tagging between rope climbs. And you're not tagging between squat cleans. You're just tagging from the rope climb to the squat clean and then back to the rope climb so that nobody can start something before something else is finished. So if he's like halfway down the rope, you can't start cleaning. Just kind of eliminate that gray area. Six rope climbs, 20 squat cleans. Um, then we're going to roll down the floor. You can do this before or after you do your next set of rope climbs. It doesn't matter to us, but you're going to add your own weight. The way that that's going to happen is you're going to roll down the floor, your lane, you're going to change like this, not with your butt towards the other lane. Butt's in, okay, clips, clips are going, spring clips are going the opposite way. A lot of people think this is wrong, this is actually a, the best way to hold it on. You're going to add, your partner's going to add on their side, okay, then you go. You can't go the other way. You're going to in each other's way it's not safe it's also just super annoying and not inconsiderate so butts in on the weight additions 
Shane, I mean, just talk about you, you have five inches, six inches on each side of yeah. that so barbell. The rig is a six foot pull up bar. So that's what this skill bar is. Um, it's actually six foot four. The bar is five foot. So you're going to have seven inches essentially on each side of the bar uh, until the next. So you'll have 14 inches between bars and. Um, but that's not a lot. So there's not a lot of play there. Make sure that you're keeping your barbell under control. Um, all that stuff. Okay. When we get to the last workout, the chipper, we talk about ground to overheads and thrusters. We're going to really try not to let people drop from above because then they're for sure going to ricochet into other links. With the squat cleans, they're probably not going to go anywhere, dropping weight, a decent weight from the front rack. But Judges, volunteers, athletes, we wanted you all on the same call so that we can go over standards and you can address, we can address any questions you have. As far as the squat clean goes, we are looking at, let me take this weight off. Yeah. All right, I'll go from the side. Squat cleans, got a good break, break parallel on the clean, okay? If you have mobility issues or whatever and you end up power cleaning, we want you to ride it down into the squat. It just you can't just power clean it and at parallel is not below parallel judges are going to be up to call on that we encourage no reps we don't want this these kind of gray area reps where not that many reps in the workout. there's also not that many reps in the workout so it's not like you're just ripping through a barbell cycling you're kind of doing maybe a small set and at the end a lot of people might be faced with singles or doubles but cleaning squat clean Below parallel, standing all the way up before you go back down. Okay? So the hip should open, and this barbell should still be in my front rack. The elbow should still be in front of the bar. So stuff like this doesn't count. You should be able to see that. You know very well what that is. You see all the no reps. You know who Andrew Hiller is by now. Okay, don't get don't get burned by Andrew Hiller. He's not gonna be there, but he could be there. He could. Um that's for the, for the rope climbs, we get it. You tag where you have to tag. For the barbell movements, make them count. Try not to get no reps, especially the heavier weights so you've got one extra rep. That's pretty much it. That's an eight minute time cap. You're adding your own weight, butts in towards your lane so you don't hit anybody else and keep your barbell under control. Any questions, put them in the chat. Yes. Add weight and then, well, you'll, you'll have to roll the way that the weights are going to be laid out. They're going to be laid out in the lanes just like this. So, my first set is going to be right here. And then, after we're done that set, tag, I can get changed and go back and do start the rope climbs. Then, I can add, I can roll the barbell up here, add the weights, right? And then um, I can go back and help them with the rope climbs. Does that answer your question? There was a question about, you know, how does tagging work? So can you do a demo mock of tagging just really yeah, quick? Demo mock of so I'm on my last rope climb. Yeah. So I'm coming down for my last rope climb. That's it. Yeah, maybe Drew, when you finish the cleans, what He's happens next? Cleans. We're going back to the rope climb. That's it. You would, but you would both be at the barbell, and you, one of you would run back to the rope, correct? Yeah. Yeah. There'd be some distance between you. Yeah. He does his last one. I'm still. I'm back here at the rope, waiting on him. We can tag at the barbell, and I can run all the way back to the back of the rig and do that. Can Drew change weights while you're doing your first rope climb? Yeah. Yes. So did you see that? You can, you change, can change weights, weights. whenever you want, basically. Just. Whether it's after or before you complete the rope, I mean, well, you it's pretty much want people working well, it's back and forth through the workout as a team. You know, not one person doing uh, rope climbs and then right as soon as he drops, you know, the we're gonna have one judge per lane, so it's gonna be hard if the judge is you know 30 feet away from the guy doing starting his cleans. So basically, the tag is gonna kind of eliminate that. So as soon as the rope climbs are done. You guys have to tag at some point here that allows us our judge to get up to the to the barbell here. Yeah. The other thing we've had I had a couple 
one qu a question for you. And I, I mean, know the answer to this, but go ahead. Here it is. Does the same person have to do all the rope climbs, or can we split them between partners? In this workout, anything. And in the chipper, there is no minimum work requirement. You can do all of them, or you can split them up however you want. The second, the two slash third workout is a you go, I go. We'll get into that, but you're going to be working on your own. So there is essentially a work minimum to complete a round yourself. But here, if I'm a rope climbing three, sure, I can do them all. If somebody's got massive quads, they can do all the cleaning. It's up to you. We also had questions about whether there's like a line to, to run behind when your partner's working. No, but just be cognizant of where you are in your lanes. So like if Andrew's working on the clean, I can't be checking out, checking it out from here. I'm in another person's lane. So you got to stay in your lane the whole time. Absolutely. But there's no like tagging line or zone or anything like that. It's just a clear tag between movements. Can I be over here and you be over there? Yeah. So you can, I could be working out over here. Go clean. Then I can go. I'm just going to start working out now. Um, well, that should be it. As far as finishing, both athletes across the finish line. So it's not your last squat clean. It is both, both of you booking it. Booking it will not be very far at that point because you're going to work from your first one down to the bumpers, do all those, down to the final set of bumpers, do all those. The finish line will probably be like 20 feet away. And it's going to be the end of the rubber mats. Stopwatch, judges will have stopwatches and they'll glance at the clock. Boom. Okay, the first workout has a tiebreaker. So does the third one, the fourth one. We'll get into that. It'll make sense. All right, any last questions worth workout one? Good. Yeah, cool. let's, let's move over. All right, you guys make it seasick. Yeah. We're going to get seasick for a second. We're going to move over to the second station here. Okay, rower, you can see the rower, the jump rope, the pull-up bar, something like that, we're good. Workout two, three, okay? It's one workout, but there's two scores for it. Working through rowing for calories as partner one, while the other one does 20 foot, 25 foot overhead walking lunge, 25 double unders, 10 chest to bars, 25 double unders, and then front, front rack walking lunge back. All the weights on the barbells are there, different divisions are there. For judging, it's a lot, but it's necessary. You're gonna get through however many rounds and it's gonna be a whole lot of reps with what we're doing. Each foot on the overhead walking lunge and the front rack walking lunge is a point. So Andrew's rowing, three, two, one, go. It's a 10 minute AMRAP. There's no time cap, obviously it's an AMRAP. He's working on calories on the rower. I start with my overhead walking lunge, and I walk 25 feet, extend at the top, none of this shuffling stuff. If you can, you can walk through, or you can meet the feet, but you're not shuffle, shuffling, you might get a couple extra feet. Then you're doing double unders, 25 double unders. Again, this will all be spaced out. The barbell will stop before the rope. 25 double unders, then 10 chest to bars, then 25 double unders. Can we do, just do a round real quick? I guess, yeah. I do partial rounds. So, I already yeah, lunged. Yeah, I lunged down. I should have been you doing that too, right? Right in the right? Yeah. Five, single. Yeah. 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 25 double unders or 25 single unders. And then 10 chest to bar pull ups or pull ups, depending on your division. Judges, double unders and single unders are a little bit tricky to count. Um, I rec we recommend counting out loud or at least counting every five or 10 out loud. And the key to it is if he, if he trips and it's in front of his toes, he didn't make the rep, right? If he trips and it hits his back of his arm or whatever behind him, he made that rep and he didn't make the next rep. So 
for counting. That's kind of a cheat sheet. And then he's front rack lunging back. This is going to start on, on the other side of a line. Then there's going to be a line every five feet. And you're going to finish across the other line with both feet. Yeah, so that was one of the questions here. You're going to have um, each foot marked out. You're going to have every five feet marked out. Every five feet marked out. Yeah. Um, and Shane, we're going to go over all this again at the, at the, in the we'll, morning. We'll do a quick rundown of yeah. this in, in the morning. But for the most part, this is going to be on YouTube. So most, most of the athletes should have an idea how these workouts are, are working. And again, as far as scoring goes, um, workout two score is the row or calories total. So Andrew's rowing, I work through that. We switch, he works through that, et cetera, for 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes of calories on the rower, and then you have rounds and reps here. Each round here is 110 reps. You got 25 feet, 25 jump rope, 25 pull up, chest to bar, whatever. I mean, 10 pull up or chest to bar, 25 jump rope, 25 feet lunging. Okay. So when he goes back to the, when he's finished his lunge, is there a tag or is it just drop the bar and change? There's no tag here because it's impossible for both of you to row. So just switch. All right, we're not going to make it too confusing here. Um, questions? Yeah, questions. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. All right, second one. Any questions, put it in the chat. Can we do double unders instead of singles? Singles. Singles. Singles scale. is the standard. Yeah, if you're scaled singles. I get that though. If you get doubles, it's hard to get it back. It can be annoying. Yeah. But yeah, they're written as singles. Any other questions on workout two slash three? All right, we're gonna move then. Oh, for judging. Pull-ups are pull-ups, right? We we should know these standards. None of you seem like brand new CrossFitters. I see all your Instagrams. Um, we know what a pull-up is. We know what a chest of bar is. Chest of bar is below the collarbone and making contact. That's it. Um, you can just you can do strict. You can kip. You can butterfly. Extension at the bottom. So no like bicep curl kept here. You're gonna let out. Okay. But we know what these are. We know most of us have done the open. You've seen the open. You've watched them. CrossFit Games, we, we should get it. Most of us know if we're not doing deliberate rep, legitimate reps. We, we know we're not doing them correctly. All right. We'll keep it there. All right, a little bit more motion sickness. Hold on, I'm just gonna place it down. We're gonna go to, let's do the kayak one just really fast. We're going to do the floater workout. This one's a little bit tricky to show here. Um, but if you've never been to the Rusty Rudder, it's on the bay, which is awesome. The parking lot is out in front of the building, and the bay is kind of on the side in the back. There's a volleyball, a beach volleyball court. That's where this workout's going to take place. Again, three kayaks working for until everybody's through their floater. You have to get it done before noon. It should all be done before 11, actually, because we have three kayaks working. They're tandem kayaks, which means you both are working. If you've never tandem kayaked, figure it out on the fly, but it's meant to be hard and fast. The workout starts three, two, one, go. Judge is on the beach. Judge has a stopwatch. There won't be a clock there. They'll just have a stopwatch. Another judge is going to be at the end of the rusty rudder dock. So if you go Google Maps or whatever, out to the end of the dock and breaking the plane of that judge out there, <coughs> and back is like 394 meters. So it's basically a 400 meter kayak sprint. We're gonna go in as straight a line as possible. That's on you. There are gonna be jet skis and boats and people. It's constantly varied for sure. Okay, it's gonna be constantly varied. But it's gonna start three, two, one, go. Partners doing over the shoulder, handbag things. The standard here is we know when we're cheating, most of us. This is not gonna count. Look over the shoulder, not next to it, not no funny business. Ten of those, break them up however you want. You're gonna grab the kayak, it's gonna be like 10 or 15 feet from the water. Run it in, get in, paddle hard. Once you hit the beach, get out of the kayak and you're gonna run across the finish line. There'll be cones or something. Um, 
you run across the finish line, stopwatch, you're good. We want this thing to be like three minutes. So it's like an assault like experience, but no. Any any standards other than getting it over the shoulder chain with the sandbag? No. It's it's just gotta be up and all the way up the top. So yeah. please uh, make sure you guys are covering your hips all the way up. So and your your knees can't be, you know, my hips are open here, but my knees are bent. So triple oh, extension. That's a, that's a no rep. Yes. Is that triple, triple extension, extension over yeah. the shoulder? Just so here. Questions on the floater workout? So full, full extension of hips and knees. Yeah, that was yeah. the one question. Any other questions? It's pretty straightforward. One person could do all the reps, correct? Yeah. Yes. One. But both partners need to be in the boat, in the kayak. <laughs> Can't get in the kayak until all the reps are done, right? Can't get in the kayak until all the reps are done. And both of you need to be in the tandem kayak. There'll be life vests available if you want them. The bay is also three feet deep, so you should be okay, but you will have life vests if you want them. Bring water shoes. Bring water shoes or, yeah, you're, you're going to get a, a, at, least, or something. at least a little bit wet. Um, workout four. Can we see? Okay. Workout four for time. This is going to serve as the final. So again, workout one is a score, two is a score, three is a score, floater is a score. You have four scores in the system by now. And we gave ourselves basically a 25 to 30 minute <coughs> lunch break. One question, do you have to alternate shoulders on the? You don't have to alternate. Just sandbag clean over the shoulder. Um, we're going to give ourselves like 25 minutes to sort out the, to rearrange the heats in the lanes. So you'll be checking, but the MC will also be announcing lane assignments at that point. You'll have your team nameplate. We'll get it all sorted out. Um, for time, 60 wall balls, 60 box jump overs. You can rebound. There's no like open standard step down. You can box jump over and rebound over. 40 toes to bar, <clears throat> ab mat sit-ups if you're in scale. 40 ground to overhead, snatch or clean and jerk, whatever you want to do. Again, they're narrow bars. So snatch is tricky for some of us. 20 bar muscle ups, 420 chest to bars and masters, or 20 pull ups and scale. And then 20 thrusters, different barbell weights and a couple of different gymnastic movements. But it's a classic CrossFit chipper. Split the reps however you see fit. Again, as far as the rig and the setup there, the wall ball targets are going to be on the front side of the rig. You're going to be, like, say, this is my lane. <clears throat> We're all going to go to the right for our wall balls. So, you know what's there? <laughs> so, while, while you're collecting your um, stuff there, there was two questions that were with the previous one with the kayak. Um, one, do you, do you need something on your feet for the kayak? I mean, is the bay going to be rocky or something that would you want to protect your feet? in some spots. Yeah, so, just, just getting in and out of the kayak, like, can't, it's going to be in the sand. So you're going to have to kind of walk it into water deep enough to where um, you can both get in it and float. So I would suggest bringing some sort of water shoe. Crocs, Crocs will get the job done. Yeah, so then the second question was, is the ability to change clothes. I assume the rudder is going to be open like it was previous years, the bathrooms. Yeah, they're basically using, we're using their bathrooms for. Yeah, so if you need to change, you can use the bathrooms and you take care of that in there. All right, sorry, um, you can keep going now. You've uh, yeah. found your voice again, Shane. So in front of the rig, basically to the right of your lane, you do your wall balls. We all know what a wall ball looks like, breaking parallel that, not like that, and then throw it up to the target. 20 pound for men, 14 pound for women across all divisions. And it's a 10 foot target and a nine foot target across all divisions. Um, yeah, 60 wall balls. For the set, for the box jump overs, 
You can you can jump laterally, you can jump forward, it doesn't matter to us. Uh, you do not have to open the hips at the top. You don't have to stand to full extension. So these are fine. Okay. Or you can do this turn. Totally up to you. What you can't do is work yourself around the box. You have to go over the box. And you can clear the box if you want to. Um, that's kind of it there. But you're free to rebound. You don't have to do the CrossFit Games open, step down, and standard. Then we work to toe to bars. Toe to bars. We want to see you, your feet breaking behind the plane of the rig. So when you can't, can't keep like an L sit, I'm fitter than anyone. Um, you want to get behind with your feet and obviously make contact with your toes or your laces or whatever, your foot. Both feet at the top. Both feet, same time, and in, in contact with the rig. Qu question back to the box jumps was, does scale get the step up? We answered that prior. I said yes, you can step up. It doesn't make any difference to us because it's not a more efficient movement. So if you have knee issues or whatever and you want to step up, that's fine. We'll count them as box get overs, but um, it's probably not your fastest way. Then <laughs> back to that's your tie after that tie break time. Those three movements. That is uh, your tiebreaker. Uh, and uh, this final workout, this fifth score is actually like our kind of like the final workout for treating it as. Um, so this is kind of like, uh, and you, you'll be, all the heats will be rearranged. So um, you know, the top teams will be in the last heat, top teams will be in the middle. Um, but basically, it'll be like a final event, uh, and it's going to trump. You know the other scores. So if there's a tie at the end. Whoever wins this last one right. wins. Right. It's not gonna. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, one question for the shorter stature people out there: Will there be boxes or something to help people get up to the to the ring? We are gonna have to get J hooks um, or J cups, whatever you know, barbell rig racks. So basically, you'll have these. The shorter to be able to do this. Okay. They're not gonna be that tall either. They're gonna be yeah, the bar's gonna be eight foot four. Um so perfect. yeah, perfect for me. If you're five foot two, that's <laughs> tricky, but it had to be a minimum height based on some of the athletes being five uh, six five, six four, six five. So um We'll, we'll help you get up if you're shorter than that, but the tall athletes will have no issue with like scuffing their feet or dragging their shoes. Um, yeah, there will be a J cup or J hook per lane. All right, after that, we've got 40 ground overheads. Again, so you can snatch it if you can. It's, it's, a, it's a narrow snatch. I was going to say on the pull up, on the pull up rig, the um, pull ups that Shane did are just about eight four. They're a little bit over eight foot, so that's about that's about what you're going to be dealing with. Yeah. Um, for the ground overheads, you can go clean and jerk. Again, we know that this is full extension. This is lockout. These are no runs. Okay, so at any point, you go back to the ground before your elbows have locked out and you get your head through, or your hips and knees haven't completely extended. It's a no run. We want all of this to be a perfectly straight line. Um, it speeds the process up in a major way if you cut any of that stuff. So you're cutting corners, you're getting no reps. Yeah, judges. The biggest thing we're looking for when you're doing a a lot of rep, a lot of reps of like any jerks or snatches. Um, a lot of times, you know, everybody's extended over top or, or their elbows are locked out, but their hips are still closed. So make sure everybody's going full extension with the hips when we hit this position over here. So it's still a question on the rig. Could somebody bring their own mats so that they are able to jump up to the jump up to the rig? I think you got to use the same standard for everybody. No. 
you'll have a J cup that you can put your foot in and you can adjust it to whatever height you want. And it's either going to be a little bit too short or a little bit too tall for your partner, but it's, it's all good. Like the shortest athlete will set the J cup and you'll be able to get up to the floor. floor. Um, second, second question, you guys can explain this is the bar itself. The width of the bar. So the question was, it looks like it's a shorter bar, but it's the same width as like a standard bar. No. The inside. So it's just five Inside, foot. collar to collar, it is 14 inches shorter. So a standard barbell is about seven, six. And in between them, I don't know what the measurement is, but between the collars, this is 14 inches short. So like Shane was saying, a snatch and an overhead squats will be a little bit more challenging because you're going to be more narrow. Yeah. So a lot of you are going to go ground and overhead, but this is a manager. Um, you can snatch them. I'm 6'1". This is uncomfortably short for me, but you can still you can still do it. It's just it's not your favorite. Okay. If you're short, make your money here. This is this is good for you. Or yeah, if you have short arms. Does that answer the question on the side of the bars? Yeah, the inside is shorter. That's right, Preston. Yeah. Um, then we're going to go back to the bar, 20 bar muscle ups, chest bars or pull ups, depending on your division, uh, bar muscle ups, bar muscle ups, we just want to see you. Why, the, why you're getting ready to go The short bar is the diameter of a men's bar, right? Yes. 28 millimeter. Yep. 28 millimeter, it's 26 pounds, but it's 25 for all intents and purposes. We're not, we got enough to count. Uh, so it's a 25. So all the workouts where it's 115, it's just going to be a 45 on your chest. Okay. Um, as far as bar muscle ups go, you want to start fully locked out, dead hang, or whatever. Um, obviously, you can get into your kip. And then at the top, you want to be fully supported. So no like falling away from the bar. Okay. So you want to be up here. And then you get into your next rep. What's not a rep is this. Yeah, so we want to see you over. I think a good standard for that would be that your shoulder is at least in line with the bar, if not in front of the bar. You're falling away from it, it's a no rub. Yeah, it's got to be a shoulder, got to be in front of the bar, and elbows have to be fully extended, and shoulders in front of the bar. No gymnastic kit. So you can't lay up, like you can't do a bar muscle up and lay on the top and then kind of just sink back into your next one. You got to do bar muscle up, all right, and then come up, press up, and then go back. Gymnastic kip. Feet above the bar. Oh, yeah. Toes can't cross the. Uh, yes, I know. So, no gymnastic kips. Crossfit kips. Yeah, so judges keep eye out for that. And then just looking for elbows locked out in front of the bar. And then the last movement is thrusters. Breaking parallel at the bottom, locked out, triple extension up top, and no re dip in the knees. Yeah, so the question was normal CrossFit open standards for the bar muscle. That's yes. 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 Yeah, as far as the thrusters go, um, yeah, basically a lot of people get into like a little bit of a, a re dip or almost making a jerk out of it. Knees are doing absolutely nothing once you're out of response. Okay, so these are good. These are not good. Okay, so any sort of action in the knees or the hips uh, will be a no run. It's not a thruster. It's question, like a question, squat, question, clean, so, and jerk. So questions on the, the length of the interior of the bar. The okay. top. I don't know what I just think about. Yeah, I was looking for the tape measure just to give it a definitive um, answer. Guys, on the, on the thrusters, when we have the bar overhead, um, judges, I'm trying to get rid of the camera here. But, uh, you know, this is not a rep here when the Elbows are out front here. We want to see basically a little bit of ear behind your bicep uh, for you know the overhead position. So just make sure their athletes are not just finishing the reps out here. All right. Want to have them finish it up here. Shane is measuring all the barbells. Um, so yeah. the, the inside of a rogue barbell men's. Is 51 ish, and these are 38 and a half ish. So it's 
12, 13 inches. So. Is there any standard for the ad mat sit up? Good math. For the um, scale? Yes. Yeah, you have to touch the ground behind your head, and then you have to touch uh, is it past your knees. Past your knees. Huh. Yeah. Either, yeah, on, on the floor or past your knees. Oh, you guys can see. But basically, back here and then up here. Can you do touching, a butterfly? Touch in front of the knees. Can you do butterfly feet? Yeah. You have to touch your feet. If you I guess you have to touch your feet. Um, yeah, just straight legs. Like, just right. straight legged ab mat sit ups. So, straight legged ab mat sit ups, you got to touch in front of your knees. Yeah. That's the standard. Touch both hands behind on the floor. This is good. This is not good. And uh, with this workout here, we are making forward progress, kind of like regional style. Um, but so, we're going to be rolling after you're done the ground overheads. We're going to be rolling the barbells up. And uh, we are also tagging in between each movement here, just like we were on the first workout. So basically, we got 60 wall balls, 60 box jump overs to start. Just for example, um, you know, Shane, when he's done his last wall ball, I can't be on the box, like ready to go doing my box jumps. Like, we have to tag somewhere between the box and the wall, wall ball station. Um, to move on to start the, to start the next movement. Does that make sense? Um, tag between movements. The last you finish the last rep on one movement, you have to tag before you go to the next movement. Yeah, yeah. that way you guys have to kind of work as a team through the workout. And we are making forward progress through this workout. So okay. finish line. Yes. Questions on the last workout? Hammer time. Um, 10 minute time cap on it and tiebreaker is after the toes to bar slash setups and it is it serves as the whole Dewey Beach Championship 22 tiebreaker. And one question will it be short bars in the warm up area? Yes. There will be. Yeah. Um, there will be weight in the warm up area. The warm up area is sponsored by Dewey Crush. Might as well just say that right now. Uh, we have sponsorships from all these awesome brands. So thank you to everybody. And no rig though, the, the rig to warm up on. So no rig to warm up on. No, we, we are not bringing a practice rig. That's a lot of work. Um, but for work for workout four or the final, same thing. There's going to be a finish line. So you both break the end of the rubber mat and time. So that's that's that. You're going to do your final of 20 thrusters close to the end. Get over it safely and get over the, the line. All right, prizes. We have prize packages for all the first place finishers. This is heavily for charity. You all, that's been very clear. Um, so we don't have anything for second and third place besides high fives, fist bumps, hugs. A sweet podium picture. Sweet podium picture. Um, and the top fundraising team gets a package of, that's literally worth $1,700. You're gonna get a barbell, all the, all the finish, the division winners, Anyway, it's all on Instagram. It's a whole lot of stuff. A lot of cool brands involved. And um, gift certificates to the Rusty Rudder. They're awesome for letting us host this. They're great to work with. And I mean, it's gonna be a couple hundred of us rolling in there for lunch and orange crushes afterwards. Can you drop the bar for the thrusters? No. We want you to at least lower it to, the, to, to your hips. Um, we're gonna, it's gonna be the same narrow lane. Yeah, just follow it down. So we're not dropping anything from overhead in the sky. So if you're done your thrusters, we'd like to see you do this. Whatever you're doing, you're rolling um, or your partner's going. We're going to be really tight. I mean, the lanes are six foot four wide and we have five foot barbells. So even just him dropping that there, it rolled a little bit cockeyed. So look, I mean, just the, uh, you know, we want to make sure everybody's staying safe. Um, we're, we're just out here to have fun, you know, so, but, uh, and also have some good competition. So, uh, that's all I got. So any, question, any more questions on any of the workouts or any of the standards? No, I think we cover it. There was something about whether you be replacement sleeves when we flex. We get two t-shirts. 
forgot that. that money that's from CrossFit Delco. It was from CrossFit Delco, yes. <laughs> Good job, guys. Um, no, there won't be replacement t-shirts. Lifting culture will happen. Uh, vendor 10, so we'll do we crush, so will the US. Um, national, the Army National Guard of Delaware. So will Grow Supply Company. They're, uh, they do all sorts of hemp and CBD stuff. They're in Kent Square. I don't know who I'm missing. There's going to be a bunch of uh, tents. Oh, Precision Performance Physical Therapy is out of Chester County. They're going to be there working on people. If you need like your hammies, you know, super hot, they can work on you. There's also going to be vouchers for treatments in the winter bags and the top fundraiser bags from Precision Performance PT. There's John Herding, he's awesome. Um, bunch of sponsors, just a lot going on. It's going to be adoptable dogs from the SPCA of Georgetown again. Um, hopefully it's not 96 degrees this year. We moved it five weeks earlier to avoid that. And that's why another reason why we have it early in the day. We want to get it done early and we're hoping to be done by 2.30ish, 2, 2, 3 o'clock. We want to be yeah. like packing up the truck and stuff. So. Four court chain. What's that? Yeah. And then uh, bottle four. Yeah. Um, uh, there's something about judges wearing wristbands to differentiate them from the athletes. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have wristbands for all the judges. We'll have orange wristbands. Um, we'll yeah, we didn't want to get staff or judging shirts just because Lifting Culture designed a great shirt. We didn't want to have you guys wear different yeah. colors. Uh, they're awesome shirts. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. awesome. Um, we are going to have, yeah, so you're you're going to be wearing like tennis sweatpants. They're going to be bright orange. And that's how you'll be identified as a judge or a volunteer. That way you can just have the, the shirt and not have to wear something else silly or, or that you won't wear all the time. So, yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. Unless you guys have other questions. Um, again, the fundraising is super important to this whole thing. Green Beret Project is awesome to work with. Adam is awesome. Andrew and I just went down, and Mike, the MC, just went down there yesterday to strategize as far as building this rig out and all that. Um, yeah. Volunteers, thank you all in advance. Um, it doesn't work without you for setting up lanes, all that stuff, and the judges. As far as judges go, we need 10 judges per heat. And we're going to try to rotate you in like heat, heat, break, heat, heat, break. So we have about 40 volunteers right now. So we're going to have some people doing scoring and everything else, but we should have about 30 judges. So you should work the heat, work the heat, take a heat break and rotate like that. And then um, we do have a 25 minute lunch break built in. You're going to get lunch from the Rusty Rudder on us and some other stuff we'll talk about at the event. Uh, Set up. We're going to be there bright and early. We'll be there before the summer. Mm -hmm. um, we got to set up barricades, all the sponsorships, the barricade banners, all that stuff. There's a lot to do in the morning. The rig is being done the night before because we can't use impact guns at four or five in the morning. And any help is much appreciated. Volunteers would be awesome if you were there before six, but um, not everybody can be. So we'll be there all hands on set. Be there by seven. Yeah, be there by seven. Be there much earlier if you want to help. And all the help is much appreciated. Yeah, you can bring your own jump ropes and it'll definitely be spots for spectators to watch. Oh, yeah, doubt. definitely bring your own jump rope. A thousand percent bring your own jump rope. We're not bringing any. We're not bringing any jump ropes. We're bringing wall balls. We're bringing, we're bringing everything, but not sneakers or jump ropes. <laughs> or water shoes. Or water shoes. <laughs> and, um, if you win for our top fundraiser, you're going to get an RX Smart Gear jump rope. So we'll just have another one at the end of the day. But yeah, go back on the Instagram page if you're curious about what you can win for fundraising and all that stuff. Um, anything else, Brian? No, looks like that's it. Cool. We're, we're recording this. We're going to put it on the CrossFit Wheelhouse YouTube page um, tomorrow at some point. So anybody who missed this meeting, which I think there's like 50 something of you and there's 200 athletes. So you can tell your partner about it. A lot of it is pretty straightforward. We don't want to take anything for granted, but 
for the most part, if you've done the open and you've been honest about it and you're honest every day when you work out in your gyms, you know the standards. Nothing here is like groundbreaking. We didn't invent a new movement. There's no wall walks or anything nuts. So this is just classic CrossFit with a little bit of kayaking. <laughs> Thank you for coming. That was less than an hour, so that was good. We wanted to keep it under. Um, if you have any other questions, reach out on the Instagram where you can email back from the competition corner page and um, I'll get back to you. Thanks for your time and we'll see you in Dewey. See you guys. Later. Thank you. Was that Booker? Yeah. Thank you, Booker. It was Booker. Love you. Booker Brew. Hey, Booker. Can't wait. I'll be there at 4.45 right, if you okay, need that's me. That's enough. We have to go. Okay, bye. She's on the beach. I know.